Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, I'd like to welcome you guys here. For those of you who are returning visitors as well as subscribers, thank you, all of you, for your continued support. As of this recording, it is Wednesday, December the 9th. We are one month, six days out from the election. And as President Trump says, we have an election day in our country, and he is very correct. However, this particular election is being contested, despite the fact that many of the cases have been dismissed, and much to the delight of the mainstream media and the left, this does not mean that things are entirely over. Because if you guys recall back in 2000 during the Bush versus Gore challenges, President Bush's challenges were also being dismissed quite rapidly. However, of course, it went to the Supreme Court. But then they, the mainstream media back then was calling Al Gore the president-elect. But of course, back then and even today, there is no such thing as an office of the president-elect. But we have this very interesting article from Breitbart. Texas sues Georgia Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin at Supreme Court over election rules. The state of Texas filed a lawsuit directly with the U.S. Supreme Court shortly before midnight on Monday, challenging the election procedures in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin on the grounds that they violate the Constitution. So basically what was happening here is Texas is feeling disenfranchised. And this is kind of why we have an electoral college versus a popular vote. Now, I'm not trying to equate one with the other. I'm simply saying that if we did have, say, a popular vote in the United States, then Texas, California, Florida, and the city of New York would essentially be the ones who determine the president and therefore disenfranchising all the other states. So basically what Texas is saying here is, is that they feel disenfranchised because of the improprieties that are happening in these particular states, which is interesting that they filed this on Monday just before midnight because on Tuesday of this week, it is the December the 8th, right? Which is the safe harbor deadline. And according to U.S. code, provides that if election results are contested in any state and if the state prior to the election day has enacted procedures to settle controversies or contest over elections and electoral votes. So we know that there is contest being conducted right now or there is there are uh contested uh motions that are being out there are being put out there by the by the courts so as you can see here of course they're talking about the date known as the safe harbor deadline falls on december the 8th 2020 of course we're all aware of this as well as the media but then of course six days later we see that on december the 14th this is when the electors vote in their states but of course if this is being contested, then that might be halted. Now, of course, the mainstream media and the establishment are already saying that Biden has already, uh, as we see here in this New York Times article, Biden secures enough electors to be president. Well, he may have an, he may have secured it based upon what we've seen from the count, but that does not necessarily mean that that is what the electors have said or what we know from the electors because it is not the mainstream media. The mainstream media it, who perceives themselves as the fourth branch of government is not an authorized body. They traditionally call it based upon projections, but that's also because that in the contest, one or the other concedes. In other words, the the uh, candidate that was running concedes and therefore the, the other person becomes a president or the incumbent president becomes president. But of course, we see these continued challenges like we saw here in Pennsylvania. And what happens is, is some of these challenges get dismissed, as we saw with uh, George Bush back in 2000. And of course, the, the left, the mainstream media, the establishment, and the Twitterazzis clap and rejoice and are quite excited about seeing these things dismissed. But people have to remember that when it comes to law, a lot of it is very specific. It, it's very black and white. And of course, there isn't a lot of room for semantics, which the mainstream media likes to deal in, or they like to frame things in a particular way. And I want to read this right here to kind of illustrate how things are being framed. So petitioners Kelly and others asked this court to undertake one of the most dramatic 
disruptive incon invocations of judicial power in the history of the republic. So the way this is all being worded and framed is to suggest, you know, look at this nonsense that's going on. In other words, like the establishment is saying, we need to move on. Why isn't the president conceding? Why are we not moving forward? No court has ever issued an order nullifying a governor's certification of presidential election results. And for good reason. Now, here's the framing. Ready? Here's the framing. Once the door is open to judicial invalidation of presidential election results, it will be awfully hard to close that door again. So again, they're trying to say, look, this is the way we've always done it. We're the establishment. We're old school. We're the swamp. This is the way we do things. This is the way things are done, right? The loss of public trust in our constitutional order resulting from the exercise of this kind of judicial power would be incalculable. So what they're trying to say, of course, is that why in the world is President Trump trying to contest this? We can already see that uh, he has lost and now he's just trying to make things more difficult. We have a process. We have a machine. We're the establishment. We're the swamp. We're the media. We make the call. Why is he resistant? Now, if you've ever, there's a great book out there um, called Inside the White House. And uh, I don't recall the author right off the top of my head right now. But he and, or he in this particular book, as well as what we have heard from uh, from various journalists at different times. Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing this. I'm not saying this is from the book, but this is kind of what was paraphrased or what was discussed at one time, and that is that the GOP sat the president down and said, okay, here's how things run. Or perhaps people in government sat the president down and said, here's how things are run. And of course, President Trump said, no, this is, this is what I have. I have goals. I have directions. I have things I want to accomplish. This is what I'm going to do. And then of course, that is probably when the resistance started was the fact that President Trump had goals, had directions. He knew what he was going to want to do and he was going to make sure that it was going to get done despite what the machine of the establishment says. So I have a lot of respect for the president. He is a very unique individual, a president that we'll probably have never see, we'll never see again or, or that we've ever had that I can think of, at least not back to the founding fathers that have this level of principle when it comes to actually helping the country. Now, I know the media and the left get delighted over the fact that many of these, these uh, challenges get dismissed in the court, but like Jenna Ellis says here, important point, reporters are missing in Pennsylvania suit. Well, they aren't really missing it, Jenna. What they're doing is they're just ignoring it out of convenience and, of course, engaging in semantics and framing exercises in their article. So, the court only denied emergency injunctive relief in the order it did not deny certification. So I want to bring you guys in, kind of let you know what was kind of going on at this point. The president has not run out of his potential path to victory and some sort of lawfare victory, which I believe is one that he should actually uh, be able to succeed in because there is a great deal of impropriety. There's a lot that was going on even here in the state of Georgia with the counting and it's obvious on the video and the, some of the representatives here in the state of Georgia, the media, the establishment have tried to play down what was going on. It was very blatant what was going on. We can see it clearly. We have witness testimony. We have affidavits. We can clearly see what was going on. It's sad to see that the establishment is so desperate that the president wins. But here we are, one month, six days out from the election. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you so much for your continued support here. If you are watching this on Rumble and or Parlay, be sure to give me a follow there. You can find all of my social media links below this video. I would encourage you guys to stop by there and check those out. If you are watching this here on YouTube, of course, that would be the channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe along with notifications. That way you guys will know when there's content here on the channel to include the Friday vlogs. And I'll see you guys right there behind that camera next week.